Hey, good Tuesday morning. It's July 8th, a little after 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Michael Clark here with your latest uh, long-range forecast update. What a crazy pattern. I'm coming to you uh, here this morning from home, but wanted to try to shed some light and provide some uh, just some insights and some updates into this forecast here as we go forward the next couple of days and next couple of weeks. Um, certainly been a very tricky and challenging uh, summer pattern nonetheless. Just where with where rain has fallen and temperatures have set up and where, where the forecast is going, um, very, very challenging uh, nonetheless. All right, we've, we've uh, missed some calls, we've hit some calls, it's been back and forth, and um, we're going to go into, you know, what we think is coming here, at least over the next few days, give you our best possible takeaways from this, and kind of go over some of our analogs and some of what of our latest thinking is with what the analog research might say for yields <clears throat> for the crop. All right, so let's get into it. First and foremost, just the, um, the crazy images of rainfall and the outcome of things as they've happened down in South Texas. Obviously, thoughts and prayers are with these folks here as they're just dealing with un unfathomable outcomes from this severe weather. Uh, flooding rainfall down here in Texas, seven-day rain totals are just crazy. 20 inches of rain in spots. Uh, going over here into, into portions now of North Carolina as well, uh, rainfall totals here uh, in excess of a foot. It's just been a crazy pattern as it pertains to the uh, the rainfall outcome, right? It, it's, you know, you've got spots that have had a ton of rain, You've got spots that have that have had no rain at all the last few days. You've got you've got dry spots. You, you know you've got really wet and saturated spots, and so it's just been a really really interesting pattern, and uh, it's been a tough one to nail nonetheless. At plentiful rains across Nebraska and portions of Iowa as well, northern Missouri, uh, but you go here across portions of, of Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, it's been hit or miss and really lack thereof. If you in our clarity tool, we have our soil moisture percentile index, the, the NAS uh, spoil, uh, sportless uh, uh, data that you see often on X and whatnot. But you can see where it's dry across Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, back into southeastern portions of Nebraska, northern Kansas, and uh, there in northern Missouri. And so <clears throat> there are folks that need rain, uh, specifically Indiana, Illinois, Michigan. There, there, there's, there's been a real lack of rainfall there. And we really could use some of it. <clears throat> if we look at things for today in terms of the severe weather risk, we've got a slight risk of severe weather up across the mid-Atlantic. All this, all this here, uh, all compiled together in clarity, by the way, you can access it. Uh, tomorrow's forecast calls for a marginal risk of strong storms in the northern plains and again up along the east coast. And then that day three outlook will call for a slight risk of severe weather. Um, a little bit of an elevated concern across west Iowa eastern Nebraska here as we get into day three okay so let's let's kind of take a look at this what's, what's been interesting I'm going to move this around a little bit um, is the percent of normal precipitation over the last 30 days all right and what we've seen here uh, is is areas that again have really struggled to see much of any rainfall or lack thereof if you will over the last 30 days, it's kind of been centered right in through here. And then again, through the southern prairies, far northern plains, right? The panhandles have missed out a little bit. Um, but we've got areas that, again, have had a, a, a plenty of moisture, right? Here across portions of Minnesota and Nebraska and portions of Iowa, a lot of corn, a lot of grain in here for, for sure. But there's also a lot to focus on in here where precipitation has ran 25 to 50 percent of the normal, okay, which is which has been lower. You look at how warm the temperatures have been. We've had above normal temperatures, especially in the eastern grain belt, the mid-Atlantic, but something that also has my attention is the departure from normal with the nighttime low temperatures. A um, lot of studies done on the 2010 corn yields uh, back in 2010 uh, based on warm nighttime lows. Um, you can see what's been happening here over the course of the last 30 days. We've had very warm, elevated, uh, low nighttime uh, nighttime temperatures all right so um, something to keep in mind there um, that it, it hasn't been picture perfect uh, you know here across the eastern grain belt it's it's we've had a lack of rain and it's been warm and so it's not been the best it hasn't also been the worst 
there's been some rain and it's been hotter before. But for context, you know, it's, it's not been picture perfect outcomes here. So let's look at the precipitation forecast here as we go forward. We use Synoptic here for this. Um, kind of give you, see if I can move my thing down there. There we go a little bit. This helps me. Uh, this is, we're going to look at this in 24 hour chunks. All right. Kind of give you the idea of just where things are going in the next 24 hours. This is for today. We do see scattered hit or miss rain chances here across the central U.S. today. You know, quarter inch, half inch of rain there being possible. Go into day two. You can see as we shift, uh, we see some scattered rain threats move off to the east and down and through portions of uh, the southeast as well, right? And then uh, as we go forward, we'll go into day, day three. Those rains and, and storm threats start to pop up there in the central plains, eastern Nebraska, portions of Iowa, going to be kind of associated with the day three severe risk there as well. Heavier rains, that day three into day four, uh, that's, the, that's kind of coming from that more of that organized storm system. So 24-hour rains there uh, Thursday into Friday are impressive and could locally be heavy across southern Minnesota, portions of, of Iowa and eastern uh, Nebraska as well there. Going into day four, the threat moves east, okay? Scattered rain chances there can be possible day four, but again, note how we don't have really a widespread outcome of rainfall being possible across some of those driest areas in Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan um, as we get into the weekend. Locally, there can be some rain, some scattered storm threats, but a real organized threat of rain isn't trying to show up until after day seven. Um, day seven, day eight, we try to we try to throw some rain in there, but we're getting pretty far out, and so confidence can be lower at that distance. If you look at this on a seven-day rainfall total from the European model, you can see where we have again concerns of a lack of rain showing up. All right. Uh, and, and I, I think that that's a concern for one, uh, it, when you look at the, uh, the European and look at the GFS here too, in the next seven days, it's got some rain in there. That's the zero Z run. Here's the overnight run. It's trying to throw a little bit more in the way of rain here, the next seven days, especially in this spot that needs it. So that is encouraging. Um, we'll, we'll watch this certainly as we go forward. The, the ensemble mean outcome of everything right now on clarity shows this for a seven day rain forecast. Again, it's encouraging to see some signals there, but we'll need to watch this going forward uh, for those seven day rain numbers. Not good, obviously, for the East Coast as they've already had a bunch of rain and more rain there in the forecast. All right. So let's take a look here. Uh, this is a look at um, the upper level height pattern. And what you're going to notice here going forward is really there any significant lacking any any lack of a significant heights, right? You got some in the south and west and the south and east, but you're noticing more so a trough here, even all the way out into the extended period. No significant heat ridge building in. This is the European ensemble uh, using the AI uh, artificial intelligence here, and it you know at the very end it tries to toss in this ridge here. The models have been doing this now for weeks and it really fails to materialize. Um, and so I think what we're dealing with is uh, after this warmth here, a big shot of cooler air is coming in this weekend behind the storm system that's bringing all of this rainfall. You can see that cold air coming in and really uh, gripping here for you know several days. In fact, probably out until the the 20th or so of, the, of July, temperatures can actually run cooler than average for a large section of, of the, the central U.S. Um, towards the end, it tries to build back in some warmth, uh, but nonetheless, a trough kind of tries to dominate this pattern. And that will set up at least for the potential for some rainfall here, some rainfall to be at or above normal in the 5 to 10 day period. If there's going to be any of that, it's kind of going to be in the area uh, that we talked about a little bit ago showing the GFS model, it's, it's, it's at to above normal rain potential here. Uh, it, 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 even normal rain would bring moisture. That's, that's encouraging nonetheless. Now, as we go further out into the forecast period, again, we kind of keep this, this uh, normal look. Some places may be 
uh, a little bit drier than normal, some places a little bit wetter than normal. This is the 10 to 15 day period here. But here's why I kind of agree with the overall pattern the next two weeks of being probably cooler and, and being, uh, you know, a normal standpoint for moisture at this point in time. Uh, if anything, it's, maybe it's a tad drier in the plains. Maybe there's a shot of rain in the eastern grain belt at the end of this week, right, uh, in, in, that, in that extended period. Uh, but I, I, the, the North Pacific pattern is intriguing to me. And it keeps this, uh, it, it, it keeps this low in, in the Aleutian Islands and the North Pacific Ocean. It's very consistent with this. And the correlation to that would be keeping that trough in the central U.S., which is what this is trying to do. And it also kind of lines up with the tropical forcing suggestions here when you look at things, at least from a standpoint of, of yeah, the MJO or what we call the Madden-Julian Oscillation. What happens is, is that the European tries to take this energy and this convection through the Pacific into phases 6, 7, and 8, perhaps uh, mid to late July into early August. You can see the outcome of those phases uh, indicate this central U.S. trough, which is, again, kind of another indication that this may continue. This cooler risk may, may continue. Precipitation, you can see, is, is tossing mixed bags in. It's hit or miss above and below normal precip. Um, it's not one signal one way or the other. Uh, nonetheless, the tropical forcing kind of supports this. So what I did is I, I looked for years that had similar patterns, similar uh, uh, outcomes, both, both with global wind patterns and with tropical forcing. And I was able to find three years. I found July uh, 2005, 2021, and 2024. When you analog the, the three of these together, when you, when you, when you put the three of these together, uh, what you see here is a cooler central U.S. component to the forecast for July. You also see the potential for wetter conditions out east. And again, the GFS is trying to suggest this. The model is trying to suggest a rain event here. Hit or miss drier risks here in the central plains. Okay. So it's interesting nonetheless. We, we certainly, listen, we're, there's no doubt we're seeing this right here. This is coming to fruition. This is happening. There's no doubt this is this is happening for sure, right? Um, boy, people just can't quit texting this morning, can they? Um, you see this happening right now in terms of that. And then what's interesting as you go forward into August is the pattern does try to warm back up rather significantly. Precipitation still remains in the hit or miss category. Maybe there's a a tropical system or two in here that, that could pop up. That would certainly be a risk with this pattern. The MJO is a tropical storm risk. But note the precip. Note how it's pretty active in through here. All right, you want to correlate that to the July map here. It's drier there. There's, there's some matches there, right, with that. Um, and then note the temperature pattern. You've got the warmest east, the warmest west, the cool in the central. You've got that in this analog pattern. So the suggestions might be that once this settles uh, in that, you know, first week, second week of August, temperatures can come back to be quite a bit warmer, and the potential can come back for precipitation to be more in that hit or miss fashion. Uh, if you kind of run these years similar to 05, 21, and 24, think about weather patterns that are similar to those years and how they kind of behave for you, that might be helpful. I, I plotted the yields here so you could see what those do. 2005 had a slightly above trend yield. Um, two, 2021 did as well. All right. Uh, 2024, however, had a below trend yield. Um, so, you know, what you could say is, is that the two out of the three being above, um, potentially what may be happening is uh, with this pattern, maybe setting up for record yields here at this point, uh, at least the best we've ever seen. Um, is that a trend line? Is it a 181? Is it above that? I don't know. Uh, but two out of the three years suggest at or above trend. Um, if we've got a cooler pattern coming with some hit and miss rainfall, especially areas in, in Illinois and Michigan and Indiana that need the rain, if that, if that four to seven day forecast can verify for rain there and cooler temperatures can come in, um, that's going to be a recipe to have a not really any big concerns right now, if you ask me. They do need the rain, though. So if that forecast or that rainfall forecast misses out in the east, that, that is going to hurt 
a lot of crop in Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan. So we need to watch that. But right now, models are kind of honing in on that chance. So if you've got questions, let us know. Share it with a friend, and we'll talk to you soon.